What's going on guys? Nice guy driver. I want to share some news with uh, new drivers. This is not for you veterans. It's going to be stuff you already know. I don't want to hear in the comments. Oh, well, we already know this stuff. You new drivers, when you become a driver for Uber and Lyft, yes, you can make money. But don't plan on this being a long-term thing. I would always plan on not doing this more than six months. That's just me. I think if you're gonna come in and do an Uber or Lyft, because most of you end up going longer. That's why I say plan for six months. Most people end up going for, I think, a year. In my mind, it could be less. Um, plan on just doing this for six months and just work on your backup plan work on your backup plan. I actually did this for way longer. I quit during the pandemic. I, I sold out, completely sold out, got that government money, EIDL grants. I got a loan and I just, just didn't want to get sick. I'll be honest. I'm getting older. I just didn't want to get sick. But now that it, I'm, everything's back to normal, I'm starting to get some money. I didn't want to come back to being an Uber and Lyft driver. I really did not. I was building my online business while I was getting the government funds, which was nice. You know, don't tell the government, but they basically paid for my business. But don't, let's just keep that on the low. And um, started building my online business. And it worked because I started getting some traction, I would say 2020. Yeah, I would say about 2020, I started getting some traction. And I was like, okay, this might actually work as a long-term deal. <coughs> Excuse me. In roles, you know, what I consider the beginning of recession, uh, sometime in 2021, I mean 2022, I should say. Um, and I start seeing online sales like literally plummet plummet and I started getting scared I ain't gotta lie to you guys the government m money was running out don't get me wrong there's still grants there's still grants to this day if you set your business up correctly there's still some certain grants you get but you gotta they're only certain months. It might only be for certain types of people. It might be a woman grant. It might be, you know, uh, Western, Eastern people, whatever. It's always something they change, you know? So you just gotta be ready. And they'll have grants for, you know, black Americans. It might be black women. It might be Asian Americans. There's always like some type of grant for different people and in different projects and businesses as well. So I think that just being ready and just having your business set up, you'll be okay as a backup plan and just having your personal and your business credit always in good shape. Everything's gotta be in good shape think the rideshare professor has bad credit? No. If you're bringing in enough money, pay whoever you gotta pay. I am working with a company that can help you with that. Links below. Pay whoever you gotta pay to get and keep your credit good. And then I think if you keep your personal good and you leverage that properly, there's no reason why you shouldn't always have good business credit because you can leverage your personal credit, get business credit, and get three times the amount of credit you could normally, you know, on the personal side. Excuse me, guys, one second, because this is like where it gets dangerous over here. All right. So yeah, as long as you keep your 
personal and business credit. That will help. And really setting up your Uber and Lyft business like a business. I'm not just talking about the fleet thing. I'm talking about literally just setting up a LLC and putting your money in your LLC. And then later, once you're able to afford it, I'm barely able to afford it, but I am going through a company like ADP, getting a personal paycheck. Yeah, I'm doing double taxation because you know I'm getting taxed on the corporate level and on the personal level. But in the grand scheme of things, there will be a lot of write-offs. Don't worry about that. I'm not a tax professional, but trust me, if you work your business right and you got the right finance team behind you, you will find enough write-offs to keep you afloat, you know, in that situation. But I think just having, like I said, good credit, you got your business set up properly, and then you get in an accident. I mean, a bad one. Your car is total. You have options. You could easily go in your business credit, not even your personal. At this point, you go in your business credit and you use a business card to purchase or lease a new vehicle back on the road. Now, God willing, nobody dies, nobody, you know, gets what, you know, should have your insurance to cover any damages. But if it's a total, you know, insurance really. They might give you the cost of the car, I guess, and then you could still go buy one. But it's just a lot of situations where just having credit, I think, is a good backup plan. It literally is life-changing, I think. And don't get me wrong, any like, I'm an expert, because I've screwed up my credit not once, but twice. This is my third time. Believe it or not, it's a good thing about America you can make mistakes and come back. Because this is my third go round, you know, messing up my credit. But if you do leverage yourself right, you can come back. Like I said, you get the right companies involved, you know. It's not like you can just pay everything off, but with time, and you start paying things on time, and you get certain things removed, I'm on my way back. You know, I'm pushing towards the sevens. You know, my goal is to get to the eights, but not necessarily to borrow on my personal. I want to have good personal credit, so my business credit is always good. Because if I do want to get in the go to fleet route, which I might do, you guys let me know what you think if I should go to fleet route, which is basically taking a course offered by somebody like the Roger Professor and uh, going to get the license, necessary licenses, which should be different in, in my state, but I'm sure his course will give me a general idea of who, where I need to go to and what I need to pay. And to me, it looks like the cost of the vehicle and around about four to five grand. But the cost of the vehicle could be under the business. It could be under the business. So that's one thing that we could do where, okay, that's, you could look at it as a cost, but you could be paid later. And a lot of times you can get these business credit cards at 0% interest and stuff like that. So we we'll see where we're going. I'm trying to see if I can get on the upgrade exit. Oh, yeah, yeah. They changed up the exit numbers on me. So it's like I got to really pay attention now. But have a backup plan. And then I'm, I'm going to say definitely don't drive at night without a dash cam. I haven't had any issues being a driver during the day, but all veteran drivers are going to tell you to get a dash cam, even though you drive during the day, I'm sure. I don't have one. I drive six hours during the day, three in the morning, three in the afternoon, but it's not a bad idea.
idea. So you can just get a dash cam. Just get one. But if you're driving at night, you have to. And when I told some drivers in the real world that they were in my car, they didn't realize that there's anything wrong going on with drivers at night. Not everybody watches YouTube, guys. That's the thing. I think as drivers that watch YouTube, we think everybody knows that drivers are getting attacked because it's not always not in our mainstream news. I mean, occasionally it is. I think this recent situation where a driver got stabbed was on the major news, but it's not always on the major news that drivers are getting attacked. So people in the real world, when I talk to them, they're surprised. And they're like, yeah, man, you they, they don't watch YouTube. So they have no clue that this stuff is going on. I really feel like YouTube has been a good asset getting the message out and what's going on in the rideshare community. But it's not perfect. Not everybody's watching YouTube. I, even some young people, I find in the real world, they're not watching YouTube. And then when you do get somebody that really watches, they really watch. Like I got one guy who really watches YouTube and he was excited that I was a YouTuber too. But YouTube's pretty good at getting the message out. But these new drivers are like really blown away that they have to invest in things. They just thought you just get in the car and just drive and you'll be all right. No, I guess probably back in well, you guys tell me how far, 2014, when you started? But I heard there was bad things going on even with drivers doing it to passengers back then. So, I don't know. You guys, give me some input in the comments below. All I know is you got to have some type of backup plan. And mine, if you've been watching me for a while, you know mine is definitely video content, media. I'm gonna have my own streaming platform. I don't even trust just YouTube to house my videos. I'm gonna come up with my own platform where I actually has licensable rights to hold my content. So this is not Vimeo we're talking about. And then this company is gonna, so it is an OTT platform, but it's not Vimeo. Cause Vimeo hijacks people content. But this platform will also be the ability to down the line, build you an app. So my mindset has always been get out of Uber, but I gotta be honest, it wasn't until the pandemic that I had the way to pay down debt and still work on my business. You know, um, I don't wanna say that too loud because government probably doesn't want you, they literally just want you to put that money into your Uber business because they don't care if you was an Uber driver. I got it, money for being an Uber driver. But they don't want you to invest in cars or pay down debt. So you got to kind of be crafty on how you do this stuff. But I'm telling on myself right now. But I, I had the ability to learn, you know. I'm what they call an old head in my neighborhood. But I still have the ability to learn. So I really sat during this pandemic and thought, what if this Uber, the Lyft thing goes bad? What am I going to do? I'm too old to go back to retail. That's really my thoughts. My last job was a, um, it was a community center. And then I went to a group home. And right when the pandemic dropped, I was at the group home. So I left right when the pandemic really started getting going around 2020. But I was like, it's for the birds. They were trying to pay us $14 an hour and people going to bathroom on themselves. I'm like, it's not worth it. So I was thinking that, you know, I don't think Uber and Lyft is sustainable to the point where if something goes wrong, what am I gonna do? So I started coming up with my backup plan, which is something I was already doing. I started thinking to myself, I'm already doing video content. Why can't I just build this out like a media company? 
that I don't know what I think watching another YouTuber and they were doing that really made me think and when you really look at all the big Uber YouTubers that's what they're doing they have media companies the rideshare professor has a media company outlet he has channels that draw in traffic that draw in sales from affiliate marketing So I started thinking to myself, I just need to make it more of a permanent thing. And the streaming platform idea, I came across an OTT platform and I was like, you know what? I need to own my videos. I need to own my content because one day, listen to me, yeah, might be worth something. I know it's it's crazy, but sitting there, listen to me. Yeah, years from now, might be worth something for my family. Sitting there, li listen to me. Yap about Uber and all the drama in my days, and then finally, hopefully, at the end of the tunnel, having everything I need, really, just to pass on to my family anyway. So, family. If you're watching this years later, I'm doing all this to make you guys happy. Thank you guys for watching. I'm going to see you next time.